What's going on everybody? It's Will. Today we're making pumpkin pie. It is perfect for this time of year. It's autumn season, which means pumpkins and squash are in season. And also it's Halloween. Pumpkins and Halloween, they go hand in hand in my book. This recipe is a 10 out of 10. I'm not just saying that because I made it. I'm saying that because it's a 10 out of 10. For this recipe, I'm going to be using a tromboncino squash, which you may have heard of, you may have not. It's an Italian squash, which tastes very similar to potato squash, which you may have heard of. So without further ado, let's do this. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a Tromboncino squash. I don't know if you can tell from the camera angle, but they're pretty big. The bit I'm using today, I think that's only a third of the original size. They can grow as tall as a human being. That is mad. And the way I'm gonna cook this is by roasting it. Just as if I was using a pumpkin or butternut squash, it's exactly the same. So to prep the squash, we're gonna first chop the head off. This squash is pretty big. So to make it easier to work with, I'm gonna first cut it off straight down the middle. And I'm gonna be cutting it off again, but this time I'm gonna cut them in half lengthwise. And then just place them onto a rim baking tray and line with some tin fork. And then you're just going to lightly drizzle some olive oil of the flesh. And then season it with some salt and if you wish add a bit of pepper as well for a bit of heat. And you're going to roast it with a skin side facing upwards. And if you're using a pumpkin this is how you prepare it. You want to first chop the head off to make it more sturdy. Then cut it in half straight down the middle from top to bottom. Then remove all the seeds for easy use. I like to use a large spoon. And if you want you can roast the seeds off separately and add it to salads, pizzas or that type of stuff. Then place the pumpkins on a foil lined rim baking tray, then lightly drizzle with some olive oil and season with some salt. And now whichever one you decide to use, if you're using a pumpkin or a trombocino squash, it's exactly the same. Roast at 25 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes to one hour or until the flesh is nice and soft. You should be able to insert a knife into the flesh with no resistance at all. If that's not the case, cook it for longer. And now do me a favor, before we go to the next step, allow the squash or pumpkin to cool down a bit so it makes it more manageable. And once it's manageable, remove the skin, add the flesh to your food processor or blender, and then process it all together until it's beautifully smooth and a puree has formed. And that's it, that's how you turn a tromboncino squash into a beautiful puree. It's exactly the same if you want to use a pumpkin or a butternut squash. If your puree tends to be a bit watery, which pumpkin puree and squash puree tend to be, just pass it through a fine mesh sieve lined with a butter muslin or a cheesecloth, but I recommend using butter muslin because you can always reuse them later on. And then just let it drain for a while to get it the right consistency. And it's as simple as that. Making homemade pumpkin puree from scratch is way better than buying the canned stuff in my opinion. Even though this isn't technically pumpkin puree, they all taste practically the same. And also, the good thing about making it yourself is that you can adjust the flavour and the consistency to your liking. And now we're ready to go to the next step, we're going to make the pastry for the tacos. Well, I say pastry, this isn't really classed as pastry as such, it's more of a biscuit. Because I'm going to be using a classic shortbread as the pastry case. The reason for it is because it's easy to use, you don't need to rest it, it tastes great and it's easier to make. This is one of my go-tos, it's way faster. So in the fruit process, I combine together 300 grams flour, 100 grams sugar and 200 grams of butter which I've cut into cubes. So it incorporates into the dough a lot faster so then you don't overwork it. And last but not least, a pinch of salt. And pulse it together until it turns into a dough. Don't overwork it. Once the dough comes together, tip it down to your work service. And just shape it into a rough circle slash flat disc, like this. Now we're gonna grease a nine inch flan tin. As I'm using a loose bottom flan tin, I like to remove the base and grease that separately. Just so that I can grease everywhere and I don't leave any empty spots. Then right after that, lightly just with some flour. That way the pastry is never gonna stick. Even though the tin I'm using today is a non-stick tin, it's better safe than sorry. Now put that into the fridge while we roll the dough out. So you first want to roll out two sheets of cling film on your bench. Make sure they're overlapping slightly. In my opinion, this is a much better way to roll the pastry out rather than just the adventurous flour. This is more reliable. Now place the dough right into the center and place another two sheets of cling film on top. Here's a good tip. Make sure the sheets of cling film that you roll out are nice and large. So then you've got a lot of room to work with when it comes to rolling the dough out. And you want to roll the pastry out until it reaches about a quarter of an inch thickness. I should have mentioned this before, but this amount of dough will make enough for two tarts. Once the pastry is nicely rolled out, remove the top layer of cling film and carefully and neatly place it into your tar case without the dough tearing ideally. Now carefully ease the pastry into the corners. Don't be aggressive. Treat it like a lady. Then peel off the cling film and remove the excess by using the rolling pin. If the pastry did end up tearing and you've got a few gaps, don't stress out, it's not the end of the world. Just fill the gaps in with some of that excess dough and then put the tar case into the fridge for an hour or two to firm up. 
Now we're ready to blind bit the tar cakes pre-oven to 200 degrees Celsius. And now get yourself a large sheet of non-stick parchment mirror just like this one and crumble it up into a ball. Then open it up again and carefully place it into your tar cakes. By crumbling it up, you're able to get right into them corners without the door tearing. Then fill your tar cakes up with some ceramic bacon beads or coins or rice. Basically anything just to stop the pastry from puffing up during the baking. And you're going to bake the tar cakes for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the edges have got a nice golden brown. And then remove the pie waste and bake for an additional 5 to 10 minutes or until the base goes a nice light golden brown, not dark. And now allow the tar cakes to cool down fully room temperature on a wire rack. And now to make the filling it is really simple. Into a large bowl you want to combine together 425 grams of Tromboncino squash puree. Or just use pumpkin puree instead if that's easier to find. The texture and the taste of both of these are pretty much identical. And then right after that pour in 387 grams of sweetened condensed milk. That will equal to one can or you can make it yourself if you want to be fancy. Then whisk it together until smooth and crack in two whole eggs. How about that? Crack in two eggs at the same time. Along with one egg yolk and whisk it together until smooth. Then add in five grams of ground cinnamon, two grams of ground ginger, a pinch of salt, approximately one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste or vanilla essence. I prefer to use vanilla bean paste over the essence because I find it's got more flavor. And finally, I like to add a fine grain and a fresh nutmeg, but that's optional though. And now just whisk all them ingredients together. And that's the filling made. It does not get any simpler than that. Fill your tar case up, make sure your oven is pre to 160 degrees Celsius and you're going to bake this for about 40 minutes to 1 hour or just bake it until it's completely set. Then allow it to cool down fully at room temperature on a wire rack otherwise the pastry will start to go soggy and that's not what you want. And then put in the fridge overnight to firm and slice and serve with a nice generous quenelle of Chantilly cream. That's what I would recommend anyway. Keep it simple. And that's how you make pumpkin pie. And that's it guys, so we made pumpkin pie using a Tromboncino squash. It tastes great, it's fantastic, but if you're thinking, well, I'm probably not going to be able to find that, don't worry about it, just use pumpkin instead. It saves you your time, easier to find, plus they both taste great. But anyways, that being said, if you enjoyed today's video or you learned something, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.